Hey everyone, welcome back to the Reclaimed Ranch. My name is Tara and I have a few projects today just from my stash. Um, there was this cute little organizer and it had bloom on it with a little bird, which was cute, but it was in really rough shape as far as the paint goes. Um, this isn't real wood, it's MDF and it was scratched. And so we're just gonna freshen up the coat of paint and I'm going to be using Fusion's French eggshell because I did like the color and this matched pretty well. And then I'm going to go in with my pointed sash to get into all those little crevices and stuff. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and give this two coats. And um, I made sure to sand off the bloom and the bird because it was, it looks like it was probably stenciled on. So it was raised up a little bit. So I made sure to sand those off, wipe it down. And that way, when I go to, to put a stamp on this, it's not going to show underneath. Here I'm going to go in with my redesigned stamp called Springtime. It's a bunch of beautiful birds and branches. And I'm, this is the first time I'm using this stamp set, so I have to season it first. I'm going to take my little sanding block there and sand all the different stamps, and that way it'll season it to grab onto that ink a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and just place the stamps where I want them on the side there. And then I'm going to take my clear thin mount and place it over the top of the stamps and then it's going to pick it up exactly how I wanted it. So I'm just going to push down on it and then I'll lift up and it'll have the stamps stuck to it. Sometimes they do come off but you can just replace it. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use my IOD ink in China Blue and um, go ahead and I'm going to ink up my stamps and I don't want it like too heavy with ink but enough to be able to get all the details in there. And I'm going to flip it back over and place it back where I wanted it. I'm going to put it down and hold it with one hand. And then I'm going to take my other one and just lightly graze over the top of the rest of the stamps there, making sure to get all of the details in. So this first side went really well. Second side, not so much. I had to do it four times. <laughs> But, you know, it's it's all a process, and it's not everybody's perfect. So then I immediately wash my stamps so it doesn't stain it as bad. But on that second, this one here, um, I went ahead and did the same process. But when I lifted it up, I hadn't rubbed all the stamp area completely, and so there was a lot of detail missing. And then I thought I was going to be cool and try and re-stamp over the top. <laughs> that pretty much 99% of the time never works. Um, so I end up taking it off, washing it. And then, see here, I'm like, oh, I can just put it right back on top and try it again. And then when I lift it up, there was like a double vision alert. So I wipe it down. I'm like, okay, that didn't work. Dry it off. And then I try again, and it still didn't turn out well. <laughs> so I took a break <laughs> and was like, okay, I just need to walk away for a minute. And then I came back and um, ended up, I rubbed it down with rubbing alcohol, got all of the ink off, did a fresh new stamp, and it worked perfect. So here I am just taking a little fine artist brush because the feet were not completely on the branch, and so I'm just extending the branch out a little bit to make it actually look like the bird's sitting on something and not just in air. And then um, this one's pretty much complete. Thought it turned out pretty cute. So here I am again. Okay, so fourth time is a charm. And so I'm just being really careful, holding it real still. And then I rub over it several times, kind of tap down in the areas that I had missed in the first go round. And then 
I lift straight up. Otherwise, if you move it kind of side to side, you'll get that blurred line again. But when you lift it straight up, it leaves a perfect image. So that one worked well. It's hard to tell because of the lighting, but it turned out really good. And then this next project, I had a Lazy Susan in my stash, and I thought it'd be fun to dress it up a bit. So we're going to be using DIY's White Swan. I put two coats of paint on this, and then I just distressed with the baby wipe around just the edges because we're going to go ahead and put a gorgeous transfer on the top of this. Usually every time I put in a, a Lazy Susan in one of my booths, they sell pretty quickly, which is kind of fun. So I will need to seal it with Big Top before I place the transfer. But before I seal it, I'm going to go ahead and do that distressing because it's just really, really easy with a damp cloth. Just lightly rub the edges and it gives it a more organic, actually natural look to the distressing instead of taking a piece of sandpaper. And that way you don't have to worry about getting down into the wood. And then I'll just seal it with the big top, one coat, let it dry completely. Now you want to make sure it's dry completely, otherwise that transfer won't stick or it can go the opposite direction and stick too much and then pull up your paint. So let it dry and then you can use the transfer. And I believe, um, I thought the transfer was, wasn't gonna work, but sometimes when I push too hard with the stick, it um, actually goes against me and doesn't work as well. So this is the redesigned transfer called Majestic Blooms, gorgeous purple magenta pink flowers. And we're just gonna place them all over the top of this. There's no rhyme or reason. I love this feature here with the redesign. You see those little dot circles? That's your hues, your color hues that they use in each page has that so that you can um, color coordinate your paints and things like that. So that's a pretty cool feature that they have. So I'm just going to randomly select areas for these flowers to go. And if you've never used a transfer, you peel off the back, the white back part there. Make sure to put it right where you want it because pretty much once you place it down, it's a guarantee that you're going to mess it up if you try to pull it up. And then you take your little stick that it comes with lightly just go over the top of it and then try and pull up that clear plastic part. So here I was like, oh no, it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> I thought it was pulling up the paint, but it was actually just lifting the transfer. And so it took me a minute and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to wait for this to dry. But I, I kept going and I found out, oh, I'm just pushing too hard with my stick. So once I got going, I just lightly was going with my stick around the edges as I used my fingers to kind of push up the paper underneath and that worked really well. And then I burnish it with the paper, use my heat gun to get most of those crinkles out and um, have fun just being creative and, and finding areas for the new flowers. So I'll let you listen to some music and enjoy the process.
Okay, so here's where we um, seal up the transfers. And I'm gonna go in with Big Top, and I do put two coats. Since this is a Lazy Susan, it's probably gonna be a high traffic area where people are gonna be setting things on it constantly, taking them off, washing it down, things like that. So you wanna have at least a good two coats of sealer on there. This next project is one of my random marriages, I call them. I just pick different random pieces in my stash and make something out of them. So my uncle actually made that star looking piece of wood there and I found these other two pieces and I thought I'd make like a little plant stand. So I'm gonna go in because um, there's some areas that are, there's holes and there's some areas that need to be repaired. So I'm gonna use the star bond quick and thick and uh, with the accelerator and fill in those holes and that way it'll sturdy up that, that edge piece there. And then I just lightly sand any of the bumps, the extra glue down. So this is a super cool piece. He did make it by hand. Um, and it's kind of, you know, sentimental. He's not able to do any of the woodworking anymore. But um, I love having something that he's done personally. So I'm going to go ahead and just drill a hole in the bottom of this long stick. And use my tight bond glue, wood glue, to place it in the bottom and then what we're going to do is I'm going to be using the farmhouse finishes milk paint and it's a one-to-one -one ratio so one part powder one part water and then you mix it together really well and then it's kind of a, a watery finish but what I'm going to do is just darken up the wood a little bit and, and then I'm going to take some all-natural hemp oil from Sweet Pickens and give the wood a nice drink. And it just brings out those gorgeous colors of the natural wood. It's just beautiful. And I'm just going to do two coats of the, it's called Driftwood, um, the color. And then I'm going to go in with some dark wax to just kind of richen up the color a little bit and make sure it stays um, sealed. You have to, you'll want to have to seal any of the milk paints that you use. And because this was kind of more of a raw wood, I did sand both those pieces. It didn't really chip. I didn't want a whole chippy vibe to it. So I wanted to make sure that it would soak into the wood. So I did sand it down and wipe it off before placing the milk paint. And here's the DIY dark wax and I just put one really good coat around it and then wiped it down with a blue shop towel and then I went ahead and attached the top with I used some of the tight bond wood glue and then I also used my brad nailer and put about four or five nails on the top and then let that dry so this is my brad nailer if you haven't had one of these, um, they're super nice to have handy. You don't have to have a compressor, and so it makes it really easy. And the final project is a vintage vintage basket, so I wouldn't have them. Super cute. Super cute. Um, the inside it's got kind of a green color and down, but on the outside it's just all that vintage goodness. And I'm going to just do the top with the fusion seaside, and I'm going to do just a bit of a dry brush. I don't want full coverage, I do want to get a little bit more in a bit. And um, so I started out trying to get a full coverage, but then I ended up taking my little hand sander and going around the edges and stuff, and then bringing it to the center of the room. Because um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a stencil on top. So um, this was pretty quick. Flip.
up to do. Sometimes I use the same thing over the a paint. And I did do a DMG inside the lid as well as the rim, the top rim, and then the handle handles with the seaside color. And here's the stencil it's from JRV. It's a beautiful rose pattern. And I'm using the JRV stencil brush in the one inch size with the DIY white swan. And that way if I do mess up, I can easily go in with a baby wipe and clean that white off. So this is uh, one of the best stencil brushes I have ever used. And it's it's soft yet firm enough to, to get into all the areas and I just do a pouncing motion. A lot of people like to do swirling, um, but I just pounce up and down. And even though it wasn't laying flat, it was still getting a perfect uh, image, which made it really, really nice. So I did the whole middle part and then I did the two ends. And I think this, this guy just turned out super, super cool. So if you are interested, I do have the redesign products as well as Fusion products and most of the other stuff is um, on my affiliate links, but my website is thereclaimedranch.com if you're interested in purchasing any of those. And um, when I'm done here, I do go in with Big Top and seal it with one good coat. That way, that chalk paint's completely sealed. The Fusion has its own sealer, so I didn't need to worry about that. Just So I just went over the chalk paint part. But let me know what your guys' favorite was of the day. I have to say it's going to be my uncle's piece. Um, just because it has sentimental value to me, and, and I will cherish that piece forever. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you back here on Tuesday with some more flips. Take care. Bye.